Hello everyone, hope you're having the most fantastic day today. Welcome to the Film Insight channel. For today's video, we're going to discuss the most interesting dishes from Gordon Ramsay's F Word. So sit back, relax, and without further ado, let's get right into the content, guys. Gordon Ramsay's Chickpea Samosas. Chickpea Samosas, delicious, simple, and so straightforward. Samosas are thought to be a quintessentially Indian delicacy, though their roots are actually Middle Eastern. The samosa is a fried or baked small triangular pastry with a savory meat or vegetable filling. It is popular in the cuisines of South Asia, the Middle East, Central Asia and East Africa, where it can often be purchased as a street snack. However, Gordon Ramsay is no street vendor, and he shared the secret to his version of this straightforward spicy delicacy with us. No offense to street vendors who are marvelous chefs in their own right. This tasty snack begins with the filling. First, lightly fry your spices, curry powder, garam masala, cumin and turmeric, followed by chopped onions. Next, season the mixture with salt and pepper, then throw in some chopped green chili. Add finely cut garlic and ginger, and lastly, your tender parboiled chickpeas and peas. Let the mixture simmer and give it some more zest by squeezing a half lemon's worth of juice onto the pan. Crush the mixture lightly and let it cool while you prepare the samosa pastry. Next, bring out the samosa dough, roll it and cut it into small circles, which you will then slice in half. Roll the sliced half piece of pastry into a cone shape and fill it with your spicy chickpeas. Close the top of the cone off and fry in vegetable oil until golden brown. And there you have it, a quick and easy treat from halfway across the globe. Gordon Ramsay's Classic Beef Wellingtons Beef fillet lean meat with little fine sinews of fat running through. It just melts in your mouth like butter. How often have we heard some poor chef in Hell's Kitchen get his ears blown out by Gordon Ramsay over their raw, overcooked or burnt beef wellingtons? Too many to count. A bad wellington is sacrilegious to the famous chef, so let him show us how to make what is one of his favorite main courses. But first, the definition. A beef wellington is a beef fillet coated with liver pate or mushroom de cells, then wrapped in golden buttery puff pastry. Begin by seasoning your fillet with salt and pepper. Sear it in hot olive oil and coat it in English mustard. Don't you dare even think about putting Dijon mustard on there, you Frenchy. Next, cut up your mushrooms and blitz them in a blender. They'll come out wet, which means you have to get rid of the water. Be brutal and spread them on a pan with nothing on it, just the heat to burn off the moisture in the mushrooms. Constantly flip the pan to avoid burning the mushrooms. You want most of the water gone, but you don't want to burn the mushrooms to a crisp. Bring out some sliced parma ham, lay it on cling film and spread the moist mushroom evenly on the parma ham. Place the beef fillet in the center of the mushroom spread, roll the whole thing nicely and finish by twisting the two ends tightly. Chill for 20 minutes in the fridge. In the meantime, get your puff pastry ready by coating one side in egg wash. Take out the beef wrapped in mushroom and parma ham and place it on the egg wash coated pastry. Wrap nicely, chill for 5 minutes and coat the outside in egg wash. Score the exterior of the pastry and bake for 18 to 20 minutes at about 425 degrees Fahrenheit. Get it out and slice it about an inch thick. And there it is, the classic Ramsay beef fillet is done to perfection. You're now ready for Hell's Kitchen. Gordon Ramsay's crispy pork belly served with gravy. Take a very sharp knife, pressure and weight. Using the tip of the knife, I'm just sort of nicking it. Here's another simple dish that takes a lot longer to prepare but is worth the wait. When cooked right, pork belly is a delicious meal, which means it goes in the oven for a long roast. Pork belly is a boneless and fatty cut of meat, often served in small portions. Chefs love it for its versatility, succulent flavor and texture. Begin by scoring the pork, then season both sides with salt and pepper. Douse it in a bit of olive oil and place whole pieces of thyme and garlic on a baking tray. The pork will sit on these as it cooks, which will prevent it from drying out. Pour white wine in the tray to about a quarter level and wrap the whole thing in foil paper. 
cook in a 350 degree Fahrenheit preheated oven for two hours, and what comes out is a golden brown succulent pork roast. Next is the gravy. For this, you'll use those decadent morsels of pork, thyme and garlic stuck on the tray. Deglaze the tray with white wine for those treasured morsels. The thyme, garlic and pieces of pork mixed in white wine will smell absolutely gorgeous. Add in chicken stock and put the mixture on low heat, then allow it to simmer until some of the liquid has evaporated. Sieve the mixture and push the garlic through the sieve for a delicious aromatic gravy. Next, chill the pork for 6 hours and cut it into small square cubes. Take the cubes, place them in a hot oven for 10 minutes and serve with the awesome gravy you just made. Gordon Ramsay's Shepherd's Pie Shepherd's Pie, a great British classic. Absolutely delicious. Mince, vegetables, potatoes. Easy. If Gordon Ramsay's F-word video with Ricky Gervais is anything to go by, we begin cooking our shepherd's pie by going out back and shooting the family's pet lamb, Gavin, or whatever he may be called. I suggest you watch that video for some great laughs. Shepherd's pie is a dish of minced meat sitting under a layer of mashed potato. Ramsay's is thankfully just as simple, but nonetheless interesting for its simplicity and with great flavour. Mince, vegetables and potatoes are pretty much all you need. A great British classic. Let your lamb set for about 30 minutes to get it closer to room temperature. This helps it brown and crisp better when cooking. Bring a pan of olive oil to high heat and plop in the minced lamb. Spread it and keep stirring as you season with salt and pepper. Add in your vegetables, grated onion, grated carrot, minced garlic, and then stir it in and cook for two to four minutes. Part the mince and vegetables like the Red Sea and pour in a bit of Worcestershire sauce, followed by gobs of tomato puree in the space between. Drizzle in red wine to bring out the flavour of the mince and finish off by adding thyme and rosemary. Let the red wine evaporate unless you want your guests drunk on shepherd's pie. Remember that as a general rule of thumb, 30 minutes is how long it takes for alcohol content to decrease by 10%. Add in chicken stock and cook for 3 to 4 minutes. Next are the mashed potatoes, which you will boil in a stock pot after covering them with just enough water to submerge them fully. Boil until tender. Check by pricking the potatoes with a fork. Strain them and use a fork or ricer to mash them up. Right about this time, you should be preheating the oven to about 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Season the mashed potatoes with salt and pepper. Then add in two egg yolks and butter. Stir quickly with vigour, then add a generous helping of parmesan cheese to make your pie golden brown. Mix well and lather it on the mince and let it sit for 18 to 20 minutes in the oven. Get it out and voila, a great British classic as prepared by a revered British chef. Gordon Ramsay's fries. Right, fries. These are Yukon gold potatoes and basically just peeled. Last but not least are fries. An interesting dish for sure just by its sheer popularity. For this list, I didn't pick the most extravagant dishes, but those with an easy level of approachability. Those are the most interesting because I can make them without breaking the bank or trekking to the store. Wouldn't you like to know how Gordon Ramsay approaches this fast food delicacy? Fries are a staple of fast food all over the globe, and every chef worth his salt should know how to make a great set of fries. Start with some Yukon gold potatoes, or just any old potatoes lying around. Don't let that stop you. Ramsay's pro tip here is to peel but don't wash because you want the starch to get nice and crispy once you start frying. Get the fryer started at a low temperature of 330 degrees Fahrenheit and get the fries in there for about two minutes. This will blanch them, making them crispy, which helps them not absorb too much oil while adding more flavour and texture. Increase the fryer's heat to about 385 degrees Fahrenheit and let them cook until you see them floating. That's a great indicator that they're done. Cooking them in two stages makes them a healthier option since they don't sit in the fryer for as long and don't absorb so much of the oil. No one wants soggy fries. Place them onto a kitchen towel to get rid of the excess oil and add fresh parsley. Finish off by seasoning with paprika, salt and pepper. Simply delectable. Well, that will be all for today's video here on the channel. I do hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, be sure to drop a massive like down below and comment your thoughts. Subscribe for more content like this and turn on those sweet bell notifications for instant access to our content. 
Have a good one, guys. <laughs>